to the web show and always fun when I'm filming in LA, especially catching up with people like writer, director Adam Rifkin. He's a super talent and we caught up with him on the show in 2006. We actually got kicked out of the Earth Cafe, which is pretty funny, but he's been doing some great things in Hollywood for a long time. Here he is on the Henry Rollins Show. Adam Rifkin is here. He's the guy who put me in a movie called The Chase back in 1994. He also directed Detroit Rock City. He also wrote Mouse Hunt and Small Soldiers. Here's this thing I wanted to talk with you about because you, you write film, you shoot film, and you're a film fan, and you know, you've been around it quite a while. Have you noticed this? That on the scale, like major budget films, that since a few years ago they cracked the $100 million barrier, I think that was like T2, and that was a big deal. Now it's like, it's an afterthought. Films eclipse 100 million, like it seems like every day. Yeah. It's an interesting time for movies because you're right. I mean, on one level, Hollywood movies have never been worse generally. Right. You know? But interestingly enough, technically, they've never been better. Yet, a lot of times, the choice of what movie to make is a mistake. And so, as a result, you've got all these great, fantastic, talented, creative, artistic people all working on something that shouldn't be being made in the yeah. first place. Or you've got what is a great idea and great people, but the afterthought is the script. You know what I mean? Right. And I don't think it's because there aren't talented writers anymore. I think it's because... You know, they've got this star that's available in this window. They've got all these sort of corporate reasons for why they need to make the movie now that's way more important than the content of the movie because they know they can market the crap out of it and still make a ton of cash. Access Hollywood. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Hollywood. I'm Nancy O'Dell. Hello, Nancy. How are you? Hi, folks. I'm Pat O'Brien. Here's what's happening in Hollywood today. Well, he is the name on everybody's lips these days, super hot director Adam Rifkin. He sure is. Adam has been incredibly busy these days, calling the shots for some of the biggest names in the movie business. But we were lucky enough to get him right here on Stage 5, Adam Rifkin. Hi, Adam. How are you? Hi, Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you again, too. You are definitely in a role these days, I'll tell you what. So far, so good, yes. Yeah. Thank you. You've written two of the first five hits for DreamWorks. You had the uh, sleeper hit Hellbreak which was sensational, by the way. We started at the Angelica yeah. in New York. Oh, right. Very good. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, so that clip cracks me up for a number of reasons, but we flash forward to uh, April 2008, and Adam came to pick me up at the hotel, and we jumped in the car, set off for another adventure, and I pulled the camera out to see what's happening in his world. What's been happening in the world of Adam Rifkin since we last crossed paths? Um, well, my film, Look, opened... Um, uh, in the at the it opened in New York, LA, and Chicago at the end of 2007. Yep. And it is currently showing in about 55 or so different art houses around the country now, uh, in other markets. And those 55 prints are continuing to travel around. That's awesome. It's great. It's been great, and the movie's gotten great reviews, and uh, it keeps playing, and it just has uh, this ongoing life it's been it's been really exciting awesome man and yeah. so uh, what are we on the adventure for tonight we're going to see a couple of your films well tonight there's an organization in Los Angeles called the American Cinematheque which is a film preservation and film appreciation uh, organization and they're very um, well respected and they have and what they do is they show old films all the time double features usually and they have the filmmakers or the people involved in the films come and speak uh, after the films or between the films or whatever. That's cool. And so I've gone to many of these showings and I go to the Cinematheque all the time. They have two theaters, one on the east side of town, one on the west side of town. Right. So I get a call the other day, well, about a month and a half ago, um, saying that uh, they're doing a double feature of two of my films and would I be interested in coming uh, along and doing a QA, and a right. which I said I'd be uh, honored. It, yeah. it was very exciting. Because yeah. uh, last week, the, uh, the the double feature and the Q&A was David Mamet. Uh -huh, wow. So uh, I, I, I'm, I, I feel like I'm in very good company. <laughs> yeah, you are, man. He's a legend. So uh, the films that they're showing tonight are The Dark Backward, which mm -hmm. is a film I made a number of years back, and Detroit Rock City, which is a film I made not quite as long ago. And the reason they've coupled these two films together, though, they're both very different from one another, is because these two films, of all the films I've made, are the two that have um, uh, developed cult followings. 
So it's um, kind of cult movie night. Awesome, dude. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah. So they can spring, what, any questions on you from the audience? You don't know what Yeah, they... I have no idea. And Dark, Dark Backward has, um, Bill Paxton is in the cast. Right. And so he's going to meet me there and we're going to introduce the film and then he and I are going to do the Q&A together afterwards. I think Brad Wyman, who uh, produced the film, is going to be there too. He'll be involved in the Q&A. And then we'll see who shows up from Detroit Rock City. If anybody good shows up, we'll do a Q&A after that one too. If nobody shows up for that one, then we'll go home early. <laughs> We'll see if anybody shows up for any of them. Frankly. Right, okay, let's find out. You first. know, it may just be you, me, and my mom there tonight. Oh, know? that's nice and cozy. Uh, but it'll be fun, yeah. no matter what. It was Bill Paxton in uh, Weird Science. He was. He played Chet, oh, the man, older brother. Man, he's in Weird like Science. one of the great. Yeah. <laughs> How funny is that? He's hilarious. <laughs> Cool, man. So what you got going on at the moment for you? I know you're always busy. Um, so now what I've been working on um, is the upcoming release of Homo Erectus, which is my, I'm looking forward to my seeing caveman that. epic. Yes. Which, as you know, I wrote and directed and starred in, of all wacky things. Yeah. Uh, but it's been great. It's, it was bought by National Lampoon out of Slam Dance, which I think I told you. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've been waiting for the right time to release it, which is going to be this June. And so I've been working with them on uh, the release, and it's just now starting to heat up all the all the stuff to do. Have you noticed uh, there's been a recent sort of talk about caveman stuff? There's a show coming out. There's another show about it. There's a there's it's a, cave mania. Yeah, well, good time, Absolutely. right? It's perfect timing. Yeah, because 10,000 BC was a big hit, and the yeah. caveman show, and uh, yeah, it's 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 perfect timing. Yeah, so I can say since getting back to Australia, I actually have seen the film now. It's absolutely hilarious, and uh, Adam just rocks in it. It's got an all-star cast, including Gary Boosie, Ali Larder. There's Tom Arnold there planting a kiss, Talia Shire, and the mighty porn star Ron Jeremy. So it's a funny film, and uh, here's a little snippet from Homo Erectus. can't help but believe that we as a species have the ability to evolve way beyond sticks and stones to who knows what heights. You know, I refuse to wear these newfangled things. What do you call them, clothes? Hey, look, everybody, I just invented pants. You know what your problem is? What? You're always trying to figure out the meaning behind everything. It's about time we start thinking out of the box here, people. What the hell is a box? Yeah, it's got lots of classic scenes like that, especially when they're clubbing all the women. But uh, well done to Adam there for writing and directing that one. But we made our way into Santa Monica. There's his name up on the billboard with Bill Paxton. They were there to uh, talk about the film The Dark Backward. And uh, there's Adam meeting some of his fans. As uh, we went inside, Bill and Adam introduced the film for everybody. Of course, Detroit Rock City was also playing as well, so that was pretty cool. But uh, the film, The Dark Backwards, stars Judd Nelson and Bill Paxton, who's hilarious. It's just a really crazy, interesting, original film. An all-star cast. Look at that. Lara Flynn Boyle, James Kahn, Rob Lowe. It's quite incredible. And then they did a Q&A after the movie. There's Brad Wyman, the producer, with Bill and Adam on stage. Took some questions from the crowd and talked about the making of the film. And then after that, I thought I'd grab Bill Paxton for a quick chat and ask him what he thought about Adam Rifkin and about his dreams in uh, the movie industry. And the, though the lighting was bad, we still uh, turned the camera on. This is what happened. Your thoughts on uh, Adam Rifkin? Uh, Adam Rifkin, uh, uh, a, a true original, an innovator, um, a great student of uh, film and of human nature. Uh, uh, in a weird kind of way, has a, a kind of a Dickensian kind of uh, sense of humanity that I really appreciate. An old soul, in other words. All right. So, uh, big fan. Awesome, man. Well, a lot of us people, if they're living their dreams and stuff around the world, I, I'm wondering if you're living yours by the career you've taken and the things you've done. You haven't you're living your dream? Uh, I've gotten to live out some uh, incredible fantasies. I've gotten to go down to the bottom of the North Atlantic and look at the wreck of the Titanic. I've, I've gotten to... Uh, to impersonate an astronaut going to the moon in Apollo 13. Wow. I've, I've gotten to do some interesting things, and of course, I got to co-star in the dark backward. There you go. All right, and uh, just advice out there for people to chase their dreams. Maybe young kids that want to be an actor or something like that. What would you say? Looking I always, them? whenever I talk to people, young people particularly, any road taken leads on to another road. And you follow your dreams, you follow your heart, you follow your passion and you all go wrong. Well. Good for you, man. Well, you're super talented. Great to meet you. Thanks Bye. so much. Bye. Thank you. Life is short and if you're looking for extension
attention with your time. 